Mason Jones started kickboxing at the age of six and would diversify his skill set with jiu-jitsu, judo, and boxing. He would be top five in judo in his home country and he would also go 3-0 as a pro boxer before transitioning to MMA full-time at the age of 21. His pro debut took place at Cage Warriors 87 against Shane Luther. In just the first round, he was able to show off his diverse game. Using Chris boxing and head movement to stay elusive and to set up his takedowns against the fence, trips in the middle of the cage, an armbar attempt from the back, and fantastic ground to pound showed a 21 year old not only with a large set of skills, but one of the only fighters his age that could put it together as well as he did. The next two rounds, he would continue to use his entire game, walking his opponent down with his hands, find takedowns, and go for submissions, before finally getting the RNC finish with 10 seconds left in the fight. In his second pro fight, he was quickly able to secure a Kimura after a fast-paced, dirty boxing match in the first minute. He would next fight Lawrence Tracy at Cage Warriors 91, and in the first round, Tracy would not stay in front of Mason, so Mason started battering his lead leg until Lawrence's sideway movement completely stopped, and he was stalked down by Mason with punches and elbows as Mason almost got the finish at the end of the first. He would get him back against the fence early in the second round using his boxing with mixing in a few kicks to get the TKO stoppage two minutes into the second round. His next fight would start with a back and forth stand up battle, but as the first round went on, Mason would find his defensive and offensive timing, and at the end of the first round, in the entire second round, battered his opponent with a constant stream of punches against the fence, with the ref looking to, for an opportunity to stop the fight. But when the fight went on to the third, Mason would find the takedown early to get the RNC finish to become 4 0. His fifth fight would start with a clinch heavy first round, with most of the damage would come from an oblique kick from Mason. After getting hit with some shots in the second round, Mason would change his game plan and take the fight to the ground. He almost locked up an armbar and even a mounted triangle. When the fight got back to the feet, Mason continued to get hit with some shots, and a visibly tired Mason would look for the takedown the entire third round and eventually got the back mount halfway through the third round and kept that position, keeping up with choke attempts until the time ran out, winning him the decision, showing that he can dig deep and adapt when his original game plan doesn't work. In the first round of his next fight, his opponent started with heavy pressure and angles and even rocked Mason early. He continued to pressure and even had some ground control. When he gassed out trying to get the finish, Mason finished the fight with heavy knees to the body, once again showing his toughness. His next fight would be at Cage Warriors 104 against Donovan Desmay, where Mason was able to show his cardio when the fight started as a fast paced brawl where he was able to use head movement and counters to tire his opponent out and started to take over in the second round. When Donovan tried to take it to the ground, Mason was able to reverse the position to get the decision win. In his next fight, he would start all three rounds on the feet, beating his opponent with lateral movement, head movement, and a diverse set of strikes, and he would secure each round by scoring takedowns, landing ground and pound, and hunting for submissions until time ran out and he won the decision. His next fight at Cage Warriors 113 against Joe McColgan would be for the vacant lightweight championship and Mason's first fight for a belt. After figuring out the range striking with a taller opponent, Mason would dominate the clinch positions against the fence between wearing Joe out with leg kicks, and he would land a big knee to the body and finish Joe with punches at the end of the first round to win the Cage Warriors lightweight title. He would next step up to challenge for the vacant welterweight Cage Warriors title at Cage Warriors 166 against Adam Proctor. Winning this fight would make him the third double champ of Cage Warriors alongside Dan Hardy and of course Conor McGregor. He would struggle with the height and reach of Adam early in the first, but then he would find his timing of his head movement to get inside the range of Adam where he struggled to hit Mason. Mason would find a knockdown with a jab and eventually finish the fight with 30 seconds left in the first round after slipping a jab and landing an absolutely stunning three punch combination plus ground and pound to get the TKO to become double champ. He would get signed to the UFC after this fight. He would fight a killer in Mike Davis for his debut in the UFC back at lightweight. In a back and forth first round that was too close to call in my opinion, both fighters had success on the feet and on the ground. Mason started to take over the first half of the second round with a relentless pace with his kickboxing skills, but Mike would land some big punches at the end of the round, knocking out the mouthpiece of Mason. But Mason would end the round on top in another very close round. In a close third round with a lot of back and forth action, 
Mike would land the bigger shots, especially with the knees to the body, giving him the third round and handing Mason Jones the first loss of his pro career in a crazy three-round war that showed off both of their skills. In his next fight, he would win the first round and a half with his takedowns and ground and pound against Alan Patrick. In this fight, Mason would accidentally poke his opponent in the eye and the fight would be ruled a no contest. His latest fight would be against David Onama. David is a featherweight who took the fight on a week's notice, so Mason would attempt to put his trademark pace on him to wear the gas tank of Onama. But David would land the bigger shots in all three rounds in the frantic stand-up exchanges. Mason won the fight off of his wrestling and judo, getting takedowns all three rounds with loss of ground and pound, in the third round gave him the most control time, giving him the decision in a very close fight. Mason next fights at UFC London against Ludovic Klein. How do you think he does in this fight? How far do you think he goes in the lightweight division? Do you think he can become double champ like Connor did? Comment down below, like the video, subscribe, and thank you for watching.